Bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is in this place, my brethren, tonight. We're going to open the word of the Lord. The letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews 4. We greet the beloved with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I can greet the brand. <laughs> it just started just talking about the Bible, but I want to greet the brethren. So let's continue. We're going to open the word of the Lord. <coughs> Chapter 4 of the Hebrews. Verse 14. We're going to read it all together, my brethren. Uh, I hope that everybody finds and give you a little time for you to find. We're going to meditate in the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's read. Therefore, since we have great high priest who has uh, ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Chapter, verse 5, 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to em empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. Lord, we want to praise your name, Lord. For the beauty of our holiness and ask Lord that you continue with us giving you a blessing tonight so that we may leave this place filled with joy filled of your grace we pray in the name of Jesus the church may be seated my brethren the word of the Lord it deals with a topic that we know and it is a topic that is even for many that have already watched in seminars and but this is not an it is not our intention here we we don't even have the, the ability to do this to teach <coughs> something um, with the level of a seminar but we should meditate together in the word of God so that the Lord may bless us tonight. The word deals with the, priest, the priestlyhood of the Christian. And when we speak about priestlyhood or the priest, it brings us back to a time, an old time. When we speak about the priest, we speak, we are reminded of the tabernacle. And we are also reminded of the illustration of the priest himself, who was the one who ministered inside of the tabernacle. And the word of the Lord bring us, brings us tonight. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, so now when we see that there was the role of the priest and also there was the role of the high priest, the high priest, he was instituted by the Lord, according to the instruction the Lord gave for many times to Moses, 
so that the high priest, so the priest would minister also in the temple, but the priest was was a Levite that would go a little farther away. The priest would enter into the Holy of Holies, and he would enter into the place where there was the Ark of the Covenant. And the word says that this man that was chosen from the tribe of Levi, he would enter there only once a year. Only once a year. And for Israel, that was the day of the forgiveness, the atonement. They celebrate this festivity to this day, not with a temple anymore, temple anymore but they still celebrate this feast, the day of the atonement. And this man there, this Levite, he would enter. And there were uh, special conditions for him to enter into the Holy of Holies. Firstly, he would have to sanctify himself to the Lord. He could not enter in that place in a reckless way. That's not how it was done. He had, a, on a, he had a special robes that the Lord had instructed him him to wear in order to enter into the Holy of Holies. In order for him to enter to this place, he had to have the blood. And the word says that this blood would go to the tip of his right ear on his right thumb and on his right uh, big toe. There's a name that they give to the big toe there's a name that they say in Portuguese, Alex. But on, on the big toe, the blood was was placed there also. And this man entered there in, in order to minister before the Lord. This man also came wearing some special indumentary. He, was, he had a rope tied to his waist. So if something happened there, no one else could enter there but they could pull him out because there was the presence of the Lord. It was the, the Lord made himself presence, present on this place. And the tabernacle is stayed at the center and the tribes at the same equidistant, three on one side, three on the other, three on the other. They were subdivided into four groups so that they would all have be at the same distance to the temple. So that's how it was the role of the high priest in the Old Testament. <coughs> he would minister, and once a year he would ask for forgiveness for the people. The people would, would bring the sacrifices, and that's how it happened once a year. But the word also tells us that it speaks about the high, the great high priest. And the word we it is has been brought to our memory about the high priest, but this the word also speaks about the great high priest, which is in the is illustrated by, illustrated by our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who offered the perfect sacrifice for you and for me. And tonight we sing about salvation. With uh, many songs we spoke about salvation. And the Lord Jesus, he He became man, and in the appropriate time, the Lord Jesus, he goes to Calvary, and he give, gives himself for us. And when I tell the bread in a, in a proper time, it's because the death of Jesus Christ also didn't take place uh, in a reckless way. It was an entire preparation. 
and the sacrifice that happened in the temple it spoke very much about this preparation that Jesus made the garments that the high priest wore also spoke about this preparation that Jesus made see my brethren in the garment of the in the rim of the garment of the high priest there was there it was there uh, sewn to the rim of the garment they had pomery in three colors blue uh, purple and red and also they they had uh, signets that were sewn at the rim of the garment there was uh, a pomery and a bell another pomery and another bell so as a as a high priest would enter into the temple they would all notice when he was there but when he entered all the way there into the holy of holies inside there no one could see him anymore no one would see the high priest when he entered when he was ministering when he entered there with the blood on his ears and finger and toe but he, he, they could hear it well we don't see him but he is alive because we can hear the signets the, the bells they are still making sound he's still moving around inside there in the same way my brethren we can see Jesus we don't see him but he is alive we can hear the voice of the Lord speaking to our hearts then that's how it was his garment was a bell and a pomeran and the pomeran is a fruit that many here know had a, a, sh a skin that is kind of hard the pomeran when it um, goes ripe it has a important characteristic it's it skins it cracks then you can see the small fruits inside the reddish fruits inside and the palmer has a time Jesus gave himself for us at the, the proper time in the right moment Jesus went to the cross to die for you and I and the word tells us that once again they came to imprison Jesus at once they asked who is this Jesus and Jesus said I am and those men they fell to the ground in another occasion the Bible describes oh, they went to imprison Jesus and they said The ones who sent them asked, "Where is Jesus?" And the the soldier said, "No one speaks like this man. No one can speak like him." So those men have been touched by the word of the Lord Jesus. And Jesus would tell to his disciples, "Look, the time is arriving in which the." the Son of Man will be delivered and now they go to imprison Jesus and Peter said no they are not going to imprison Jesus and takes out his sword and he goes to, to, to kill him throw the sword at the head of a soldier and Marco if you, Marco was not uh, fast enough he would have lost his head but his ear was cut off but Jesus restores his ear and makes Peter to understand that now was the moment but my, my brother, we need to understand that many times people people believe that Jesus was taken away. He was in prison. Jesus brought, 
Jesus brought us to that spectacle of salvation, that great moment. Jesus carried that, that multitude, and he tells Peter, Peter, if I if I wanted, I would ask the Father, and it would have sent twelve militia of men, two twelve legion of men, of angels actually. If I'm not mistaken, approximately 72,000 angels to help rescue Jesus. But Jesus didn't do that. He gave himself for us. He gave himself for us so that we would understand, so that we could understand that everything that we have and everything that we need is not as great, as not as important as salvation and the light that he get, has given us. And Jesus now goes to that place and there he carries the multitude and there he gives himself for us. And it was ready. The pomerang cracked its shell and now it opened up. And now we can feed up of the Lord Jesus, of this wonder, of this blessing. <coughs> so there was a pomerang and a signet. It is uh, telling us that Jesus is alive. Are we seeing? No, but he is alive. We don't see it, but he is alive. We don't see him, but he is alive. And that's what, that's the message that was on the garment of the high priest. And the problem had three colors, purple, red, and this speaks to the love of God, it speaks of his blood. It reminds us of the joy of salvation the blessing that used to be in the presence of the Lord. And tonight, the Lord, he has shown that an angel was here in this place. And he would come to, to collect the requests that were in our hearts. And many times, we ask freely, we ask many things who have great need. Sometimes they ask too many things. Lord, I need this. I'm in a, in a difficult situation at work or maybe a difficult situation in family. It is infirmity. It is our own necessities. But we need to understand that the greatest request that we can ever ask to the Lord is, Lord, write my name in the book of life. Because that's why the Lord Jesus came. He came for this, to die for us so that we would have life. So that we would, so that we would come, like it says here, let us come with confidence in the throne of grace. So the word of the Lord says that when he dies on the cross, Jesus, the word says that the, the veil of separation, the veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies, it was ripped from top to bottom. That veil had approximately 18 centimeters. It was heavy, it was thick. And it says that when Jesus gave his last cry on the cross and gave and surrendered his spirit to the Lord, that veil was ripped. And now, 
taken up <coughs> what was uh, of the knowledge only of the high priest now is open to everyone. My brethren, we can come at any moment to the presence of the Lord and we can speak to our God. The word says the following. Let us therefore come to the, with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may be able to find mercy and grace so that we are helped in the proper time, in time of need. There are other translations that say, uh, let us come with boldness in another translation because our Lord Jesus gave us this right, my brethren. He gave us this right because before us, no, he went ahead of us and goes there and he dies for us. But he has, he has told us that, the Bible told us that the shackles of death was not able to hold him. Because what kills man is not is sin. The shackle holds us back and wounds us because of sin. And Jesus goes to the field of death and he fights a battle there. And the word says that the death was not able to detain him because Jesus had no sin. He had no sin. And with this, he opens a new and living way to life. There is no greater gift. Out of everything that we can have or ask and need, there is no greatest gift than the gift of salvation. There is no greatest gift than this that the Lord has given us. Everything that we might do and even thinking about doing is as little compared to the so great salvation that the Lord has given us. And on the side, the Lord would tell us that an angel was here collecting collecting the requests from the heart. And especially an angel would he goes towards a man here tonight and he has a great need he has a very great need especially the need of salvation Jesus Christ he has a great need of knowing about life and the Lord tonight my brethren is waiting he is expecting that you give your heart to him. The Lord wants to, wants to bless you, yes. He wants to collect your prayer request, yes. But the Lord also wants to give you eternal life. Because that's why the Lord Jesus died, to give you eternal life. So that we, you would have joy. So that you would feel joy, feel this salvation pulsating in your heart so that one day you would be able to live with the Lord Jesus in eternity. Lord, bless it, be the name of the Lord. Let's praise the name of the Lord now. Song of praise.
Lord to Jesus. The church will stand up at this moment. Glorify the name of the Lord. The instruments are going to be playing. Glorify for the blessing of salvation. If you are lacking an assurance, the heavens are open. The veil has been ripped. There is no longer any impediment. There's no need for anyone to intercede for you. We have direct access to the Lord. What the priest did only once a year, we can do at every moment. Enter into the presence of the Lord at this moment. Lord, we need, Lord, of this salvation. We need to live this joy. Lord, because we, if we live this joy in everything, the Lord will bless us. We ask, Lord, at this moment, collect the prayers at this moment as you have shown, Lord, in a vision. Lord, we want to place before your author our life, our adoration, our joy to be in this place. I want to praise you, Lord, for so great salvation to you that you have given us. We also want to ask you, Lord, that you continue with us. Take us home in peace, Lord, to our homes. And that this joy may continue with us. It is the prayer that we say to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Remember, you can you may be seated. If you still need a, a prayer or even an explanation of what was said here tonight, the ushers and deacons are going to be here in the front to pray for you, to glorify the name of the Lord with you. And I want to say to everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus.